This time, I begin a two hour drive to the beautiful Lake District on a busy bank holiday weekend, for once with the weather on my side. This wild camp would be like no other, as I plan to trace the footsteps of a local man well known for his escapades and villainous activity in and around the Lake District. I begin my journey in the village of Tilberthwaite, just next to Coniston. lads and lasses this time I'm in the lakes a little place called Tilberthwaite just near Coniston and I'll be planning to trace the footsteps of a notorious character villain lovable rogue that was responsible for bootlegging and uh, distilling whiskey this guy was called Lancelot Slee but you'll probably know him better as Lanty. Lanty had many schools throughout the little Langdale area including a cave and moss rig quarry which is now walled up. His largest still, Lanty's Cave, is in a field at Arnside, and one hidden in a quarry on route to Betsy Crag. And it is this still I will be trying to locate on this wild camp. precise location of this still I'm not too sure about but it's a vast area to search so fingers crossed bearing in mind it's quite a dangerous place as well so you've just got to be aware I'm guessing this is some sort of refuge for sheep or, or whatever well that's where I'm headed just up there see it just there that's it away that's why I love coming to places like this it's like a box of chocolates you just don't know what you're gonna get That was pretty shite that leg, wasn't it? I'll not give up my day job. Go ahead, punk. Try a little bit of wild camping, if you feel lucky. Well, do ya, punk? Now, Landy was described as a fresh-faced man, not to be messed with and was of Irish descent, but originally came from Burradale. He lived in and around Little Langdale for most of his life, and on the census forms he was a farmer stroke quarryman, but this was to mask a more lucrative, villainous career, that of smuggling and moonshine whiskey by night. itself obviously still used on a small productive scale just for local gift shops and that sort of thing 
That looks quite interesting. Is that worth an explore? What can this be? That's quite steep, that actually. <laughs> Whoa. So you've got to, you've got to be quite careful here. Because there's obviously deep shafts. I mean, that's got to be a, at least a 50 foot drop down there. foot through that that's your way I mean you could think that was solid ground so that's why you've got to be really careful especially in old workings like this but that that's just too steep to get down that I'm not gonna risk that right we've got another one here Again, it's quite steep. The remnants of some building there as well, like a probably a little hut for the quarry men. So one of Lanty's stills still eludes me. So onwards and upwards. I had to have a look anyway. There wasn't any obvious entrances or caves or anything like that. No, I've just got the chow on it going back up there. But this weather, it's not a it's not a drop of wind. It's just still is out and that sun it's about five o'clock at night and it's red hot bring it on I mean this this landy must have been one fit guy to be a farmer by day and come up all the way to here on a night time I mean he lived until he was 78 which was a canny age back then. Right, this looks a little bit more interesting up here. Not the sheep. there but I don't think it's a shaft or anything deep I wouldn't be able to get down anyway that's quite steep and it's bricked off up there so that's a that's a no-no it's a bit like looking for the proverbial needle in the haystack this like a lot of it's quite dangerous and unstable So I'm not having much luck at the minute. But we are with the weather. I'll tell you what it is for the lakes. It does not get much better than this. No wind. 20 odd degrees. Visibility perfect. Easter bank holiday weekend.
After following many blind alleys, I was starting to become a little concerned that I would never find the site of Lanty Still. Yes, what's this? What is this? This looks interesting. Could you get a still in here? You probably could. Iron, some sort of iron ring there. Could that be the, a part of an oak barrel? Yeah, you probably could get a still in here, it's big enough. It's the only thing I've seen that resembles a cave. Up here anyway, and it's right next to Betsy Crag. Where well, local legend said it was, so... Does look like the ring of the top of an oak barrel or a whiskey barrel even. Interesting. Whoa, that's quite uh, loose underfoot as well. So you just gotta go and can eat. See, for me, it's not just about the wild camping or the wild camp itself. It's all about the your surroundings and the history about the place. And this place is absolutely stuffed, and I mean stuffed, with history. I mean, there was slate quarrying probably as long ago as the 1700s, 1600s and whilst I was doing my family tree a few years ago I think it was my fifth or sixth great grandfather James Ullick he was a slate quarryman up here so chances are he would have worked up here so there's kind of like that sense of belonging as well for me anyway because I've got like family history all over the lakes. I've probably mentioned it in previous videos as well. So uh, I'm really lucky in that respect uh, to have sort of like ancestry in such a lovely place like this. Bonus. It doesn't get much better than this. My little Lixada stove has never let us down. Goes everywhere with us. Little 
little twist to the tail. Lanty's business partner, partner and co-bootlegger uh, was a guy called William Patterson. And William Patterson dubbed him in uh, and he fled the country because apparently this land he was a big guy um, of Irish descent and somebody not to be messed with. So after he sort of like uh, blew him into the local authorities, he like buggered off. Five times great uncle uh, of mine was a John Patterson who lived in uh, Tilbeth Way just down the road there. So and he lived here around about the same time all of this was going on. So there's a very, very strong chance that this John Patterson would have been related to William Patterson, uh, probably even his brother. So, so there's a bit of a bit of a twist to the story. What a place this is! You never need to be trekking up to Lakeland's highest mountains and giving yourself a chow on when you've got ones like this, which are only maybe 300 plus meters. And look at the views you get; absolutely stunning. So I'm going to finish off my brew, maybe just chill for a, an hour or so, then put my tent up. So we'll, uh, we'll bring you back a little bit later on. Right, for those that are new to my channel, I've got my usual kind of like set up here. I've went for the two to three season sleeping bag there British Army bivvy in a the air mattress uh, by mountain equipment it's never let us down uh, it's quite compact when it's rolled up so it's a good bit of kit um, so that that's basically it uh, and that's going to be my view in the morning Right, this is a rundown of me wild camp and kitchen. Man camp has uh, culinary skills here. I've resorted to a, a pot noodle. And if I get peckish after that, why not try some Asda's own Irish stew? I'm, I'm either all or nothing, me. You know, I've, I've went uh, cheap and cheerful the day and easy. So that's it. Voila. So just up there, you've got Coniston Old Man, I believe, a weather lamb. No, I think I actually think that's weather lamb. Coniston Old Man is a bit further behind. You've got, I believe, Bowfell. Behind that, you've got Scarfell and Scarfell Pike. Over there you've got the, the Langdales. And I believe over there is the Helvellyn Range. And the Fairfield Horseshoe. You've all heard of the number one. Well, I'm the number none. I don't have a number. Numbers are for gravestones. Being the wild camp that it is, um, I just thought I'd have a little tipple for Lanty. I didn't manage to find any of Lanty's hidden liquor, so I'm going to have one of these. So it's not entirely a dry wild camp. You can't forgive us a little tipple. Yes to you, Lanny. Oh. 
That's nice. Quiet, not much wind, probably one of the best nights I've had in the lakes actually. Although there is a slight breeze now, but just look at that view. Look at that view. I've just made me sell a quick brew, uh, I'll have me sell a, a little bit of porridge, and uh, I think I'll pack up and uh, head off back down to the car but I think I'll try a different route this morning um, just in case I've missed anything on the way up it's really dry this morning there's not even any like condensation or a dew or anything so it's a bonus when you can pack the tent away bone dry it makes life a lot easier That wind's just a little bit on the nippy side, so uh, I'm pleased I brought this with us actually. But I think the forecast for the day is uh, probably not as good as yesterday. So I'm going to quickly get packed away and uh, head off back down. Lanty was convicted at least twice in his lucrative career, but many of his stills were never to be found. I can't say for definite that I found the Betsy Craig still. I will leave you to come to your own conclusion, but I can't help but think that Landy had the last laugh. Slay died at Greenbank Farm in 1878, aged 78. Right, I'm at Little Langdale here, next to the three Shires Inn. Uh, I thought I would end my video here because this is where Lanty spent a good part of his life. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, now for the two hour drive back home.